You can download the ask in the video for free, link in the description. To remap inputs in Godot, we will first create a custom button node that we can use to remap any input. Create a new scene with the button as the core. Right click, rename, rename it to input remap button, then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. We won't edit any of its properties as we must set that inside the ready function in the script, as we will be adding this node to the Godot's add node window, and in doing so, it will reset any manually edited property. Finally, select the button and add a script. Inside the script, we will first establish the class name. This will add this node into Godot's add node window, with the class name being the name that you search. We will then establish two export variables. We do export so we can edit these properties when we add this node to our settings menu. Action is the name of the input action that we want to edit. An example of an action is UI up, UI accept, or UI cancel. You can also set this to any custom made inputs or actions inside the input map menu. Then action event index is the position of the input key under that action. So for something like UI up, for this node to edit the up arrow input, you would set it to zero, then one for d-pad up input, and two for the left joystick up input. This variable basically allows for multiple buttons or events under the selected action. Then we will also establish a constant. We must do this as Godot doesn't have any normal text that we can grab for the controller buttons, so we will use this constant to grab what we should display. Although, we don't need to do this for keyboard keys. You can also find a copy of this constant that you can copy and paste inside the free Art Assets Patreon post that you can check out, link in the description. Then inside the built-in ready function, we will make it so that we can toggle this node. That way, when this button is toggled or pressed, we wait for any button presses, then once we receive the appropriate button press, we update the input on the action that this variable is exporting, and untoggle this button. Then inside the built-in toggled function, we first check if the action export variable hasn't been set, or that the action doesn't exist inside the input map. If so, we use return to skip all the code below. Otherwise, for the text to display on this node, if we are toggled on, meaning that the player has pressed down this button, then we set the text to awaiting input and call return to skip all the code below. And if the action event index is more than or equal to the amount of events under the action, meaning that there is no input button or event at the given index, then we will set the text to unassigned and return to skip all the code below. Then in the case that this button isn't being pressed and there is a button or input event assigned to the action, then we will first define a variable for the input, which will grab the list of action events at the position of the action event index, which will provide the button or input event that this button node has set. Then we check if that input is a joypad button or controller button. If so, then we check if the constant we created contains that button. If so, then we set the text to the entry in the constant. Also, if the constant doesn't have the entry for the button being pressed, then we set it to a string that contains the button index inside. Although, you should add any missing button index that you find to the constant. And in the case that the input is an input event key or a button on the keyboard, then we will check if the button input is a physical key. If so, then we set the text to the physical key code, else we just set it to the regular key code, and we use string provide the letter, number, or symbol of the key on the keyboard. Additionally, to ensure that the text is set properly when the game runs, we will call toggled passing false inside the ready function. Now for the input logic, inside the built-in unhandled input function, which is a function that activates when an input occurs, and that input is not being used by the input function, or any green or control inherited nodes, then we will check if the action doesn't exist inside the input map, or if this button node is not toggled or pressed down, then we call return to skip all the code below. Then we check if the button is pressed, and that it is either an input event key, which is a key on the keyboard, or an input event joypad button, which is a button on a controller. Then we will create a variable to grab all the input buttons or events from the action. We will then check if the action event index is less than the size of the action events list. If so, then we remove that event from the action, using action erase event at the position of the index. Then we add the new event that was just pressed, update the action event index to the size of the action events list, as we have just added the input to the end of the list. We do minus one because the list starts at zero and continues on, but size doesn't account for that. Then we set button press to false, to untoggle this button and to also have the toggled function run, setting the text of the button appropriately, and we release any focus that this button may have. Additionally, to provide a cancel to setting the input, inside the input function, we can check if a mouse button has been pressed, then set button press to false, and release focus. This code will cancel any button setting when any mouse button is pressed, and you can use these two lines of code to stop this button node from setting any input. An example of using this node inside your game is to go to the scene where you want to edit input. I would have a label node to tell the player what input they are editing, then press the plus, type input remap button, Keep in mind that this is the class name that we set earlier, then press create. You can then set the name of the action. To find this, go to project, project settings, then under input map. If you are using a custom action, then use the name of the custom action found here, and also make sure that the name is spelled correctly, including any capitalization. Otherwise, enable show built-in actions, and you can use these names found here instead. Then type that action into the action export variable, and set the index that you want to edit. Additionally, you can add extra remap buttons as you would like. Just make sure that their index is different between each one that is editing the same action. Now you have a remap button that can change and add input to any action or button you can add to any good old game that you are making and don't forget that you can check out the project files link in the description